Podcast. I am your host Shane Hayes, and with me this week, returning guest host Ted Haycraft. Yeah, that's me. And uh, frequent host, the person who's been the most consistent uh, or guest on the show, Aaron Smith. It's a pleasure to be here, sir. Uh, so what we're doing is for the, I'm bringing the typical year in tradition we have. Whenever I would come home from Austin, we'd always end up at an IHOP at the end of the year usually staying all night uh talking well, we would like meet aaron would meet us up after his shift at the theater right you know? yeah we i mean we'd see the sun up usually uh when we do this and we about the last three or four years i've infamously started calling this the richard lester dinner because by the way i'm gonna bring up the story this is the last time it's going to get brought up here because we're not going to litigate this argument but you two have the argument over because this has I don't been mentioned see on, an argument. This has been mentioned on past episodes. Because Richard Lester won the first Video Vanguard Lifetime Achievement Award. From MTV. From MTV. You consider him the father of the music no, video. No, for, he's already doing it, though. He, he well, refuses no, no, no. You to guys, not no. have this conversation. You guys can get it out. out. You guys can let it out for, for real quickly. And then we no, are no, moving no, the no, fuck on. No, no. Well, I mean, no. I'm just, we don't, we, no, we need, we need to do I it. Knew this would happen. We would have to do a podcast on it. I don't think nope. that it deserves You guys a could do a podcast on that. that. We've beaten that horse. It's so, dead. But I and, and, and I'm not so definitive. I mean, I'm trying to I, I massage it somewhat. Uh, I, and, and it's not a, it's not a black and white thing about it. he is the godfather and the ground zero of the you modern see, music video. You know he's doing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hear it. But uh, I'm just saying that there is. Well, when you say, okay, see, I can't do it either. The, the modern music video. I knew it was going to happen. That's I mean, got to be, you know, what you're referring to is like the the prime era of music videos in the 80s and 90s. That's something that, I mean, it's 20 years in the past. But then why wouldn't point. the people at MTV give them that award? Or they're, I guess, just blooming it in. MTV, I mean, they still have this is back video when, music awards. They still yeah, make awards. Yeah, but this is back when the video band It's just a joke. It's an No, this is back when people. it meant something. I mean, when they no, were. No, it didn't. <laughs> but I'm just saying. It, 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 there was there's a reason Hard Day's not. I blame you for this. <laughs> you as well. You should, because by, by the way, uh, those listeners at home wondering why their son fade out in the middle of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I edited away. No, no, but we we'll, we'll let it we'll let it go. I'm just saying th- that you guys are going to put up your own podcast. Look it up, RichardLesterDebate.com. No. A, a podcast with one episode that goes on forever. You have notes and questions for us, I guess, though, right? Well, okay. the problem is, is this, this is 2020. What the hell did we see this year that was true? We're talking about what but. is good. The basic problem, also, normally, if we had a normal year, is we are do, uh, recording this episode a few days before Christmas, much less before the new year, and. I, don't, I, I assume, Smith, you're this way, but Ted and I, I know, we don't have our top 10 of the year until the f- next February after the year because top 10s are designed for film critics in major media markets and uh, who get to see things on a press screening schedule. And then, I mean, the, the year designation of all movies is designed for the Academy rules. So it's like, hey, we think this movie's not going to be make more sense to go out wide until January. But by the way, we'll run it for a single week uh, in New York or L.A. Just all we have to do is run it for one single week. And that's what qualifies it. And I mean, Smith, you 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 work this. So I I haven't even considered a top 10. I know normally I don't even consider that until after the award ceremony you know after the oscars so a lot of times i don't even you know put one together or start putting one together until because of our market a lot of times we don't get a lot of those films until after the first year anyway yeah yeah, yeah. and well the worry i have is this is the year that broke me this is the year this is the last the the asterisk that has to go over this top 10 list means that this is the year where i'm done with top 10 lists so let this be the last stand of the top 10 list. Well, no, it's always been problematic in Evansville. I mean, you were living in Austin. You were fine. Well, no, Austin wasn't fine. No, there. but you were. But you had a better leg up on it. 
But I actually sure. I started doing my film journal because of I used to do at some point and I was writing for news for you when I when I was a writer for news for you I had to come up with the top ten and so I said I can't remember everything I saw so I started keeping a film journal which now I also have, I will do it on Letterbox on the, on the internet same here but I actually keep the old school paper one too but um, I would pretty much do a top ten of what basically what the Evansville Market had. And but then it, and then it got to a point. Uh, I remember it was like there would be some years when even an Oscar nominated film wouldn't even show up. Remember how sure. I would bug Mick and you and everybody. Are we are we going to get? <laughs> I, I'm you know I'm going to get um, you know we like one uh, one major uh, nomination wouldn't show up, and I'd either have to get a bootleg of it or find it or. Uh, before we could even uh, the Oscars showed up because I, I hate to go into watching the Academy Awards without seeing all the majors. No, I, I mean, and it, I mean, it's hard enough to watch it just to, like if you want to say I want to even if you live in a major market, see like I want to see every major acting nominee. But we don't have to do our full blown top ten. Smith, you're here if you don't have a top ten. Lynn, I just want to know what the movies were like this year because you you were you were there on the front lines you saw like i, I mean basically like i'm curious like what the hell did they release this year because well, every, every time i looked at something there was this bizarre thing russell crowe russell crowe russell crowe they that felt like they want to dump it they it felt like stuff where it's just like oh this is a movie where like we we're okay showing up on our quarterly report so but this is our write-off movie that we're well i think with. you know and also the, the fact that i think uh show place being a mom and pop store they had a different you had a different kind of struggle hold going on. But you guys were fighting, and then AMC had their own fight that where they were fighting, and then even the Malco had their own fight. And then, as we see right now, like Wild Mountain Time, we we're just discussing before we started the podcast. It's only playing in Owensboro, and and, and neither AMC or the Showplace has it. You know, and, uh, Emily Blunt, a major film, John Hamm's in it, so it's, been it's a, it is getting universally derided. But I mean, I also wanted you to talk about it because you're one of the. Um, I was really excited about this. Well, movie. yeah, when I told you that, you didn't even know, realize it was even playing. I think when I sure, I it was, well, no, it was worse than that. I didn't put two and two together. I knew there was a new John Patrick Shanley movie, and uh, I just saw this movie's getting terrible, or laughably bad. There, there, there were no movies, ever. mostly. There were no movies, like you say. There was um, Russell Crowe. There was a Liam Neeson. There, there was nothing that came out. So. Um, and you know, you talk about Wild Mountain Time. I think what's interesting to me about you know that's important to you because you would have come to see that movie regardless if that plays in a normal holiday season it plays on one screen it might only play for a couple of weeks you would still come out to see that the problem is now that's the feature film because it's the only thing that got released what's the uh what's the kajillion kajillionaire what's kajillionaire was uh, on my list what's of, her name miranda july a miranda july film would never play here <laughs> and, and, it, it, and it played here because <laughs> of the pandemic yeah, there were, well uh, there was uh uh, Half Brothers that I think started last week. There are a few of the movies that are playing now that I think got st- moved up to the majors simply because you know there were there was no other place to put them and there were so many spots to fill. I was so close to seeing uh, Kajillionaire in the theater, and then I waited till it was home, and it was twice the price at home. It was twenty dollars to watch it. Mo- really? Most new movies are twenty dollars to to rent, but well, okay. Wasn't Bill and Ted just ten? I thought they did that wisely. I, I think and I, nobody picked that up here either. Here I think I spent money more than I know. I, honestly, I, I still think it could play. Yeah, like you could put it on the screen now, and some people would still come to see it just for the experience and because they want to see I that agree. movie. For starters, I want to ask you, Smith. Had you heard this? I, I, I've heard this fact uh, repeated a few times the last few weeks. No COVID case has been traced to a theater yet in America, has it? As far as I know, um, now of course I don't know if people if that information gets put out because then you're, you know, you're asking for someone to come forward and say, well, I know this person that worked in New Jersey and they got sick, but I know for a fact that our company, my company, no one's gotten sick. And, and, you know, we take this seriously. It it was important to us. And I think that none of my staff has gotten sick. We've all done a pretty good job. It's difficult, but I think no matter what you do, even if you're just obviously Ted works in media as well. You know, you got to work with these same ten or twelve people. It's important that you you take it seriously. Obviously, Ted has as well. It's it, it's well, important. It should be important to everyone. I, I assume the stats are kind of thrown off by the fact that attendance uh, is down. Much less. Where are you guys at? Fifty percent, forty percent capacity. We're at forty percent capacity, but I, it rarely reaches that. Now is the perfect time to see a movie 
because you could, well, Chainsaw Mank, he was there by himself. Well, you know, but if, uh, ironically, it seems like nothing's really changed for me because <laughs> <It's true. laughs> a lot of the films I see, no, I, the I, only it, person it, I'm here. the only person there, it's the weeknight. So it's not that different uh, situation for me, but for I'm sure for a lot of people, uh, it's probably an, an interesting situation, uh, d- different for them. Well, how did you guys, Ted? Do you do you have your list? Do you want to do reverse order? Well, I I, I brought my journals in front of me uh, just to count them too. Because you could well, the the thing I was thinking we could do our um, honorable mention because my usual top ten year of the list li, year of the list list of the year usually goes to a top seventy, and it always goes through <laughs> the movies that I kind of liked, and it usually ends in this masochistic point of like yeah, almost I, everything's in there. It seems like <laughs> yeah, well, no, it hits a point where I'm just like, God, I didn't like this movie, but I admired this movie. That's usually the point of where I was like, I'm gonna stop listing them, and I think I got this year down to I've been up to seventy in past years, and this year I got to twenty nine. Twenty nine. So wow. you saw twenty nine films, or compared you saw twenty nine that you enjoyed compared to your average. 29 and the 29th is the first one or actually the 28th is the first one I was like I admire that movie but I didn't like I didn't enjoy that movie so I got an, I got an easy number one well save your number one for last one do reverse countdown well I mean bring I, a little, little I don't attention. have a, I don't have a solidified it's more like I know my number one and then I get about three or four other ones that I would put in my so list. you're just at a top five then five six yeah right now I mean just because of what I've seen and uh, I, I and then here's another problem now with the streaming situation. You know, you're gonna. Have, it's such a problem. You, it's such a burden. It's such a all this entertainment. Do you have this. all the streaming services, Shane? I have most of them, but like, or are you bootlegging them? You know, or people like. Uh, did you hear that the stimulus bill is going to make a uh, torrenting a felony? Uh, what? Yeah, it's it's now it's a legal it's a felony to go through a legal streaming service is what I think the they're they're changing the language. But, but I'm just, I'm just saying if you okay you okay I'll get this streaming I'll get two or three four different streaming services my monthly fee isn't that bad but there's gonna be that one streaming service you don't have is gonna have that one film but that one director you want to see yeah I don't and, I don't I don't have Criterion and I know the last Arden Brothers movie I still want to see is on there there's like. I know on my list. Uh, I think uh, you haven't seen Uncut Jim. I've seen Uncut Jim. Oh, Dark Days. Oh, I'm thinking. Dark Yeah, I'm thinking of the other brothers. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> I, I see what you did there. Well, okay, Smith. Do you want to? Do you? What? Did, what was your favorites of the year? Honestly, I couldn't even say. I didn't prep. I didn't know that this was going to be the topic. Um, <laughs> Did you have any movies you liked this year? This happens, I think. Um, when, but, and this happens with me with music, and I'm sure this happens to you as well. In a situation like this, when you don't have a lot of new features coming in, that I think you know you revisit favorites or old classics come back. So, like, I spent an entire like season with a Van Morrison record that I used to really like and I think that that's the way it is with movies. So I watched you, a lot you, of old are, films. Are you saying the old Van Morrison is better than the <laughs> new anti lockdown? <laughs> the government no, I go Those are not now. bad songs, honestly. Those, he's those still are, a genius. Those he's, are well sung songs yeah. at best. No, he's those a are, brilliant man. He may not always I like I the, the the songs kept coming up on my release radar on Spotify and I gloriously skipped to like make sure that Spotify knew that algorithm it was like we're not supporting Van Morrison on this one. Not either, but I did I listen to anything that he made. I mean, I don't know what your opinion is on Morrissey. I mean, I still feel like I want to hear his music. I, I, I well, really... if, if you stop listening to Morrissey just because of what he said, you would have given up decades ago. So Fair enough. Well, okay. But... Well, I got a movie on my list that I wanted to talk to you about from the way long days whenever we were allowed to uh, go into a movie theater uh, free without the fear of disease. The Photograph. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? Because you were really big on that movie at the beginning of the year. I, I don't know if I was really big on the movie. I, I, you were big on the soundtrack. That's exactly right. Uh, I really had a good time with. And to me, when you're talking about a list, what usually winds up for me somewhere in the teens are movies that I really wanted them to be in the top ten. Movies that I really liked, but I knew just had a lot of flaws or really weren't worthy of a top ten list. And definitely, Photograph for me would have been that because it was easily. The my favorite soundtrack of the year. It was it was terrific. Yeah, I mean, I wanted the movie to be better. It just seemed like it didn't have like much drama to it. But 
It was it was fine. Uh, it, it it wasn't embarrassingly bad, but it had some really great elements, and so I I, I think I wind up putting that somewhere in the teens. Okay. But but really, I it, it's hard for me to and I recommend it to you. I recommend it to Ted, and then I tell you beforehand, hey, uh, this this is you're not going to love this movie, but look for these things, and I can give you an idea of what I liked about it, and I think that's something I can share with you, and I know for sure that you're going to get the message. I'm drawing a blank on it. The photo, it's a uh, Ray and uh, Lucky Stanfield. Did it actually play here? I know that's so long ago. Yeah, it was February. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't see it. That and seems I like it's, an it's way on. I, I mean, I, I'm looking because at my when, when you brought it up. I was, I couldn't even remember that that was this year. But yeah, that had to have been. Uh, uh, I didn't see it. Was there any more movies like that, Smith? That, you, that come to mind? Um, no, is what you're saying. Did you watch Portrait of a uh, Lady? Yeah, but that, that was last year. No, it it was this year for us. And that was, it was the last one I saw before. This is, this is the other thing. That's another problem. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, do you count, well, yes, how do you did. count that? Yeah, no. It's a, it's a it technically, it's a 2020 film if for us. And it was the last one I saw before the shutdown. So, yeah, that's always been a problem in Evansville. You know, because we've always, we, you and I, you know, all of us have talked about that. Because, you know, do I put that, can I, can I count that on this list or last year's list or this year's list? Because, all right. I will happily put that easily as my number one in <laughs> Evansville, so... <laughs> Yeah, but, but I, I, that wasn't that was, it, it it has, was high on my list last it year. Has so the, uh, pre, it has the has the honored place of being the last film I saw before you guys shut down. So is that right? Yeah, no, I, I, I got it in. I was so scared. I think I, actually I think I was really worried I wasn't going to get it in. I think lock the doors behind you. <laughs> in fact, I'm thinking about uh, films I missed. I actually have a little note, uh, a post a note of films I missed. Part of it was because of the pandemic because I just an Invisible Woman. And T- my last movie was Invisible Woman. I think it was e- either uh, Invisible Woman or, or Invisible Man. Excuse me, Invisible Man. Those yeah. are or, two different things. <laughs> those are two Invisible things. <laughs> those were actually both surprisingly strong. I liked both. What about? I, I was going to ask you. Uh, Onward. I just finally got. I bought. Uh, oh, uh, actually, on. I can't, I can't remember. Onward was on my list. I, I missed it. Color Out of Space was also going to be one of my last ones I saw too. And did uh, did they have the Simpsons short in front of Onward when you guys played it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I because I, I was like there was no Pixar short. Uh, it was a Simpsons short. And yeah, I, I saw it. Well, Disney owns okay. the Simpsons. Okay, I mean I'm just saying I didn't see it, and so the Blu-ray doesn't have it. Uh, I honestly on often have I to don't think provoke I mean, you to watch animated features. So since I didn't really oh, get into it by that, no, this, well, this no, 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 I, 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 like I, I, I see, no, 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 we don't need to get into that either because. Yeah, it's the Aaron's Lester tradition. <laughs> Aaron puts me in a corner, and it's not How's fair. That Nobody puts Ted in a corner. There's no physicality about it. And, but I, I, have, I have always been in a point to see he the Pixar. Oppressed. I've always been in a point to see the Pixar movies. Uh, and I missed Onward. For sure. This yes. is exactly. I have not. If you always made a point to see them, wouldn't Onward be included? I, I, uh, I, I, I was. I think it was playing. The last the one yet. actually, Soul, is available now. Disney Plus. Yeah, see, and I don't have. And that that's screen. a shame. That really is to me a shame. Yeah, you I know. Mean, this is precisely why I had you guys on. Um, I mentioned uh, Color Out of Space. You saw that, Ted? No. So I, I got the Blu-ray, but uh, I, I haven't. I, 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 this is for Dustin. I got the Blu-ray, but I haven't watched it. Uh, my friend Dustin, who always complains that you get a Blu-ray and never watch it. Um, it that's technically a, tw- a 2019 release date, too. Yeah. I think because of festivals. So. Yeah, I always went down the Bell Court had it. It did play here. All right. I'm going to read off my uh, honorable mention just to get through it. Um, number 29, Shirley, which I did not enjoy. Um, she Dies Tomorrow, same boat, uh, though I liked it a little more. Then we get to the movies I kind of was okay with. The Hunt, uh, 26, On the Rocks, 25, Totally Under Control, 24, Disclosure. Half of these I don't even I don't even remember, I don't even know really I mean or I just I have to look them up because do you want to like no I'm just saying you're you're rattling off things that I just have never just had. for the sake of conversation do you want me to you want to mention which one I think you saw the hunt I'm pretty sure you saw the hunt no I missed it I you missed the hunt I, just, I missed the hunt I saw the hunt at the drive the drive in I know but I'm just saying there's a couple that are that I have no idea what you're doing. I did not like the hunt so uh, it's, it's I wanted to like it and maybe you did I mean no I just felt it's, like. It's well, I like I, I there's there's a lot there. It's a disappointing movie, but like also per the edict of the show, I'm trying not to sh- like I don't want to talk negatively about really recently released. Well, if you can so. only come out with 29. <laughs> um, yeah, the the uh, <laughs> how many have you seen? If you've got 29 on the list, 30. Uh, yeah, no, no, it was there was I 
I think I did defer onto the side, err on the side of more on this list is here because I wanted 2020 to have some substantiality. I'm also curious to what isn't on the list. I'd like to hear what he didn't make the list. And it was in that, it's like five film. Out of- All right, this continuing on. 24, Disclosure. 23, Shithouse. 22, Trial of the Chicago 7. 21, I'm Thinking of Ending Things. 20, Mank. You told me you loved I'm no, Thinking no. of Ending Things. I, no, when we spoke for a short... Did no, you tell you, me that? You're or, thinking of somebody yeah. else. I told. I know. I probably. I told you that. Probably. Okay. I'm, I'm, it's my. It's. It's. Well, we'll get to that. Nineteen Beastie Boys story. Spike Jones movie. Uh, eighteen Defy Blood. Seventeen Dick Johnson is dead. Sixteen Getting Back to the Theatrical. Birds of Prey. Uh, fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> 15, speaking of questionable movies, or these next few are questionable movies that I, st- I did kind of like. Um, the Way Back. Um, 14, The Social Dilemma. 13, King of Staten Island. 12, Color Out of Space. And the one I want to talk about that didn't get my, crack my top 10 is uh, The Wanting Mare, which played at the Chattanooga Film Festival, which they showed online. It was executive produced by Shane Carruth and was directed or co-directed, I forget which, by uh, the VFX, a VFX guy for, maybe he worked on Carruth movies, but he worked on David Lowry's movies. And it's this really lyrical, poetic movie that's done completely with CGI fantastical backgrounds. It's, it's a very lyrical movie that, I won't say you know it's amazingly come together, but hopefully that movie comes out too. And I'll stop there at my top ten. Do you have an honorable mention, Ted? You want to? Start no, to- because I, 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 everything is just kind of floating around the, in the top five dozen, half dozen, top half dozen. I I I, I have not solidified it uh, other than my number one. So we need to wait till the February episode before exactly. we exactly. And even then, it's just like going to have to be February of twenty twenty one. Well, of your of your all, uh, I don't know if you want to call those honorable mentions or just your extended list. I, I like Trial of Chicago Seven quite a bit. Um, I mean, Ted. That's an important. Trial, I felt too. like that was probably more important to Ted. Like he's a little bit older than us, so I mean that was meaningful to him. But I thought it was a it was well done. And I, the way back, I thought it was really. I, I mean, I love Ben Affleck, but I thought that is it was, that Gavin Newsom. Ga- wait, no, that's the governor of California. Gavin. <laughs> that's Gavin, another one I missed. With the way back. What is, what is that guy's name? Is Gavin Connor? Gavin McLeod. Gavin. No. Ga- no. 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 No, 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 no. Um, the problem, uh, the, I won't out the guest who said this because he's going to be on another, he, she is going to be on another episode. But a past guest I was talking to about Chicago 7 and and he was talking, he'd already seen um, Judas and the um, the Black Messiah. Have you guys been running that trailer? Uh, yeah, but that's 2021 now. That got pushed back. Well, there's it's supposed to, it's supposed to be. Uh, I saw today something they're going to do something where they're going to qualify it, whether because they pushed the qualifying to February. It's going to come out in February. Uh, that sh- it's uh, Shaka King directed movie about Fred Hampton, and he said he saw it, loved it. He she saw it, loved it. And it makes Chicago Seven look like an SNL sketch, which there are certain parts of, of I, I I am a Sorkin fanatic, but there's certain things that I you watch it, you know, didn't happen the way it happened in there. That is just the biopic is a, such a rotten genre of like, let's take a true story and make shit up about it to make it a, to feasible to people who are too lazy to read Wikipedia entries. To, to interject, uh, you know, and I'm sure this will come up because this was also in your honorable mentions, but I think part of the reason, part of the problem that you and maybe to a lesser extent Ted had with Mank was that you felt like the history wasn't right. Like you had a problem with who was getting accolades to a certain being... extent. The weirdest thing about Mank is that Mank stays pretty consistent until the inclusion of the last line. The the last Mankiewicz's line in the movie where it's just it's just like magnanimous and maybe slightly balanced and then the movie ends with a poke in the eye of Orson Welles fanatics, so so are you an Orson Welles fanatic, and does that color your appreciation of the movie? No. I mean, the, I, I think that movie just didn't... I didn't love it either. I, I thought it was great. I, the, we her, were going her, to be disappointed. Fincher, that, that movie, black and white, subject matter. We were going to be disappointed. That movie is entertaining. People are not getting any credit for how entertaining it is. It's a witty movie. It's interesting. It's beautifully shot, well acted. Uh, it is not boring. It, it moves along for a two hour, 17 minute movie. I think it is. It, so. I don't even think it's, it, it might be that, but it's, it might be a little less. 
I think with everything, it's one thirty. So it might be well, you know, just a, to the point that this is for a year. Two hours for a year. This paltry. It's a good thing that a movie like Mank came along for. Uh, you know, like, this is why we can't have nice things, this is as why you we say. Have, this is why we can't have nice things. I don't know. I, and also, I have to admit, maybe I was more excited about seeing films, and I think you specifically, you know, you weren't excited about getting out. And so that also has a... a but but to me, um, I was I was glad to see it. I, I thought, if, if I had a problem with it, it wasn't so much the history or how, you know, they skewed things to get... Because it isn't necessarily you know, direct history. But, I don't, I don't think this history was, uh, any, I, I, I mean, I, Chad, you had the interesting point about, uh, when we first talked about it of like, we still haven't found out, do you need to be an expert on the history behind the making of Sissing Kane? Do you have to, have you, do you need to have watched RKO 281 before seeing Hank to enjoy it? Or do you go in knowing nothing about this? And is this entertaining? Does you finally read the uh, Pauline Kale essay, which you know goes back to the uh, episode we previously did, and you had you had kind of the same reactions I did, where like the joys of that essay, which is it's a great invocation of thirties thirties film and the wit and literary talent that goes into thirties film. Yeah, I mean, I just yeah, I, if anything, I just enjoy. If it's not accurate, I just enjoy the feel and the and and it, it was con- condensing things like that one room with all the writers in it and and just the witticisms just flying. I mean, I just love that. I, mean, I can I just I, and uh, walking down the hallway with the uh, mayor uh, and uh, Louis B. Mayer talking and and Thalberg and I just love all that stuff. Now you just gotta be careful in history, but you're I you're right. I don't know. I think. I, I think it's a little bit too inside. and so, well, uh, you, you, know, you made that point. I just don't know. I think, well, you told me when I was on my midday when I was doing my cinema chat, I, you know, you know, I, I got, you got all these young kids. That, well, no, no, no. It's not, it's not even a question of like, do they need to know about Citizen Kane at all? Like, can they just know like, this is about how movies were made in the thirties. And by the way, Upton Sinclair had this speaking to historical accuracy, that's, this thing that was kind of made up. To that's the probably movie, the but. more accurate thing that would be speak to the new uh, kids that don't know anything about Citizen Kane because it's fake news. The whole, it's kind of like, no, I get, again, that's my point. Like the movie still well, works, you know, but even though that was the, not, Mankiewicz had nothing to do with that, but yeah, and it's just so funny, but I mean, what I would think, I would think an inquisitive person watching would go, why is he, you know, why is this, this, Orson Welles' character has him uh, in this cottage writing this, and why is it so important to keep his credit on it? Is it is that? And, uh, I guess I guess it, it does tag it out at the end the movie, but uh, I don't know. I, I, it'd be, I, we need to find some people that. Let's end. You got um, he he put out a movie this year. Soderbergh put out a movie this year. No two one, or three for him, did he? <laughs> no one put out a movie this year. Spike Lee put out a movie this year. Um, the yeah, mo- technically Wes Anderson did as well. Yeah, well, where is the Wes Anderson? What, 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 I'm, what, I'm, has it been? I, what the hell are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Really? Well, I mean, I'm, are you serious? It might have gotten reclassified 2021, but I mean, the trailer for it, the French film. Yeah, the, the trailer, dispatch? the movie didn't. No, come it out. hasn't shown. But... Oh, I thought you guys were going to say he put out an American Express commercial. That's the best no. film this year. No, 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 no. Where, where, where is French, what's the name of the film? French Dispatch. Where is it at? Because it's, I mean, it's God, it's been sitting in the can forever, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And people, and people. Well, it's, not, it's not forever. It was just supposed to play a can this year. And, and what's I mean? So is it still sitting on the shelf right now? Yeah. Like a lot of movies that got pushed back. I don't think it has a solid release date. It's not just blockbusters that got pushed back. Um, but, you know, they, oh, oh, they oh, consider that a blockbuster. That's a movie that didn't cost a bunch to make. You know, his production. Well, is, the is, definition of a blockbuster has changed significantly right now. Just his films like, have really earned big contraction. Yeah. They have well, lately. They earned their It's money basically back. what is a movie by something we were excited about pre-pandemic that is actually going to likely be good. Because a lot of what got released this year was, hey, this movie isn't good. Let's go ahead and try to make it a write-off. And... Well, the the movie the last one I was going to bring out was Steve McQueen the small axe movies which uh, I saw the second one today but I managed not to get it through but that one the L A film critics uh, best pick and you going back to Soderbergh here you go here's a good example one films on HBO 
the well, films on Netflix. You got to have two different streaming services to keep up with them. What was this? I, I, he had two last year. I don't know. He had two this year. The crew, uh, uh, there's the the two Netflix films, and then there's the HBO film. Those are last year. They had. High well, Fly- I'm just saying. Just oh. I'm going back to this. Just mentioning that he had High Flying Bird and Laundromat. Right. I'm just, and he's he's uh, he's staying busy as ever. And the pandemic has slowed him down. And the fact that you got to have two different streaming services to keep up with him. He shot a movie during the pandemic that he's editing right now. Um, Meryl Streep also is like, she's all yeah. knocking um, him out. Let, let. Well, all right, Ted, do you want to start? Uh, do you want to just go ahead and launch into Well, I just want to, I just easily, uh, my drop dead, uh, no problems, uh, take no prisoners number one is, uh, I, I think I'm, I, I want to, uh, I'm thinking of ending things, the, the Charlie Kaufman film. Okay, since it, since it's already been brought up, it's it's not it's, it's not uh, uh, anticlimactic to go ahead and bring it up right now. Yeah, I mean it's just that's that's pretty much easily my number one film. Uh, what or what did you um, what did you see in it that um, based on my estimation, without going further into it, did not see into it? What, what, I'm like, what, what did you like? He had it in the teens. Whereas you had it, I know, one. yeah, and I just it, it's it, it was it's uh it's, it's has it stuck with you? Have you seen it a second time? I I I I'm I'm, I'm anxiously wanting to sit down and watch it a second time, but it, it, it's there's so much to dive into it because there's so many uh, so many different subtexts going on and 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 thoughts and and try and then piecing it together and you know and, and you know the the references to Oklahoma. The polling kill references, the, all this just stuff going on. Then the, the, the relationships, the actors themselves and their characters, the look of the film, the time of uh, playing with time. Uh, and it's just there's so much going on um, that just that's to me was the, the easiest. Did uh, you read about the uh, uh, David Ehrlich uh, Indie Wire uh, Skype between like? Um, it was like Boots Riley, Richard Linklater in him, and Kaufman started going on about how personal he thought some of the reviews were, and and Richard Linklater made the point it's like don't read. He said don't read the fucking reviews, Charlie, and then made the point that when we get done with 2020 and look back on it, people are going to remember this movie as a cinematic gift. Yeah, well, I agree with that. That's true. Uh, another uh, high in my list would be Possessor. Wow, that was not going to be on my list to ask you about too. I still haven't seen it, and I knew you felt you felt pretty. I about loved it. it. I think uh, you know we, we, if we can't get a new David Cronenberg, okay, David can't. David doesn't want to go back to his uh, roots. We have his son. Uh, I, I I I bought Antiviral, his first one, but I have uh, Viral, but I haven't watched it yet. Uh, but Possessor is just it's top it's top flight. It's it's uh, uh, anything his dad did, or even in some ways even. Dare I say, well, you know, even better, maybe. But I mean, that's high praise. Um, but uh, I love Possessor, and then another one of my favorites, and it, I think, uh, it may be too traditional for critics to give it, to knock it up high, is uh, uh, Let Him Go. Uh, I didn't see it. Let Diane Keaton. I mean, Diane Lane and and, my, and Kevin Costner. I didn't see it. I, I remember when it came out. That was th- actually Smith. That was one of the movies I was thinking of when it was just like these are the movies that are. Nice. Yeah, those were one of it was uh, Freaky, which I think is on a lot of people's lists. Uh, Let him go. Oh, freaky is now. I see. I was disappointed with Crudes. Universal actually released films. They were the only <laughs> studio that were still putting out. Films. Some reason our AMC uh, uh, labeled their showing of Let Him Go as an artisan film. Right. I'm like it's so you can call it whatever you want, right? Yeah, now, I honestly. Mean, hey, yeah. we got a movie showed up in the mail. Th- we're gonna play it. I think uh, for some reason, uh, yeah, it got. It, I guess it, it got technically labeled as a, you know, almost in the alternative independent category. But it's so to me, it's just, it was just a meat and potatoes American film, and it's it's so well. And there's there's one scene. I don't want to spoil it. Okay, but there's one scene that just makes me. I, I want to watch it just for that one scene in some ways because. It does two things for me. It it, it, it helps uh, really establish the relationship that Diane and Kevin have as husband and wife, and also there's a great edit, uh, an edit thing that it's nothing new in editing. Well, you know that's gonna get me. But it's it's uh, it's so I'm like it was it it, it, it really got me. And in fact, the New Yorker review actually refer- referenced that scene I'm talking about. Was that Lane or Denby or? Uh, I think it's Lane. I think it was. Uh, the, you're you're getting to the heart of one of the things that I worry br- that when I say 2020 broke me, uh, film going wise, is 
I used to be the person that would go see even movies that I knew were not going to be great or weren't getting the reviews because I knew the critical consensus was going to miss something like what you're talking about there. And or the movies that were not great having an exceptional scene in them in the middle of it. And I think that's true with Hillbilly Elegy. I think it has a great scene. Uh, oh, man. I'm not recommending the movie. <laughs> no, no, no. You're, yeah, I no, but I think Aaron, I almost said you shouldn't say that. I um, I think uh, you were, by the way, Ted, not like the second or third person I heard say that movie wasn't that bad. Yeah. And, and Aaron, and I we've we've had a long running uh, discussion about Ron Howard and his films. And uh, yeah. and, and, and he, he delivers. I mean, uh, it, it's not it's not, you know, Raging Bull or Days of Heaven or, you know, 2001 A Space Odyssey. But he, you know, uh, you're not getting but he just, you know, film after film after film. And now he's. He's, well, it seems like the reviews are making a um, such an issue of uh, uh, the uh, the attempt of, at best actress for Oscar Glenn, Bate. for Glenn Close's a, uh, makeup. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just again, Glenn Close I, is not the highlight. Certainly, what's really weird? Of course, I have a bad habit. You know, I I see everybody trouncing it, so I go in with low expectations. And, I, and of course, when I go into a film that has some good elements in it, and I have low expectations, it comes out, you know much better in my mind and my and my enthusiasm Rob mountain time is another one it's like i think it was the last time i looked it was like 28 on rotten tomatoes and everybody's kind of you know oh the irish accents are terrible and it's just a scenery film and everything else and i was like really enthralled by it and then i was so happy that glenn erickson uh on his uh, latest is uh, posting the day on, on cine savant he liked it and he went on he did a little essay on it i was like wow finally you know somebody that's in sync with this because and it's uh, like you said it's Moonstruck what's his name I always John Patrick Shanley yeah I mean it, 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 should you dismiss him you know uh, uh, doubt and uh, well I mean that's the other reason you and I are always going to be keep talking just because like we have a pan or a certain level of people that were like look we know it's getting bad reviews but this person's the good stuff in the yeah. past this person is still talented right we still want to see what they're going to do exactly but you're also getting to a point that's been bugging me about the the level of movie going that I've had over the years that needs to diminish just because like if someone tells me something, multiple people tell me something's bad and I lower my expectation, that's, that's not a good way to experience joy, much less good movies. Well, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know, but see, I have the source too, honestly. I mean, if some random stranger sees you and I I really enjoyed uh, the <laughs> Russell Crowe film, he's got, gained a lot of weight, I and saw, obviously I, he's great. I saw part of it uh, at the uh, drive-in, looking over my shoulder, and was like, Jennifer Conley? What is she in right now? Oh, that, that's that's not good. I haven't said that. A Hinge is not a terrible movie, but, I mean, if Ted tells you, or I tell you, or someone whose opinion you respect, that they saw a film, it's flawed. Similarly to, you know, like obviously Hillbilly Elegy or Mank and, and you talk to somebody beforehand and you respect their opinion. That doesn't, that shouldn't, that should bring you joy. It's not my question of you guys is... You're, you're sharing it. something with someone whose opinion you respect and I, I, maybe you come to the same conclusion or, or you come to a different one but it's informed by what that person told you and then you can, you know, report back to me and say, you know... I saw the Russell Crowe film, and he was very heavy, but I think he's an excellent actor. I get that, but it's not it, its not a question of you guys' standards or my que- or how much I trust you guys. My standards are like It's more of like you guys said, hey, this bad two-hour movie had a good 10 minutes. <laughs> no, okay. Well, I, I, ideally, you know, you should, it'd be great just go in with, with you know, in, in, that you've been in a, a tank and had not heard anything, you know. But that's impossible without yeah. influence. And, and I also have the opposite problem. Well, that's I, the problem you had guys had with Tenet and with Mank is that there was too much influence. Oh, that Mank was had, high expectation. Well, no, Tenet no, no, too, no. I think. Mank did not. Everyone, Ted and I both, when we went to see Mank, we knew no one was saying great things about it. Mm. Oh, not well. I, I, I wouldn't, was. I, I, but, I mean, like, Stephanie's, what's her name? How do you pronounce Stephanie Zacharek. Spent two pages in Time Magazine, but, it, but by the end of them, like, but she doesn't seem to be that enthusiastic about it. Uh, Did it, you read reviews before you saw? I read a few because See, that's, I, I, well, I, I knew, thought we had a deal. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I knew. You Matt, know, Ted's not going to bite by that. There's that some, was not a deal. There are deal. some films that I get just so like I'm, I'm, I'm the fever. I'm like you know, we're in a stippy boat. You know, your your shakes are like heroin addict. Yeah, right yeah. Now. It was so with Mank. I was like, oh my god, and oh my god, this is just gonna. So I, I couldn't resist, and I read a few reviews. I said because it's if it's bulletproof for me. 
I thought you know Mink was bulletproof because um, um, whereas whereas the other things like I don't want to uh, uh, I don't want to read you know so but also I, I go into with the high expectations and so I went in with Mink with high expectations and there was no way it was going to match I've had that problem with films like uh, my my most famous one I repeat all the time is Heat when I saw Heat I my it was no way I love the film now but it was like it was like a, I was disappointed with it because it. It was no way it was going to be what I had in my mind. There's that's a notable phenomenon. I've heard multiple people had that problem who saw it opening weekend, especially. Um, but okay, but I mean, I'm talking about movies that still surprise you, transcend expectations. Like those are like I, I always come back to the the George Lucas point that from as long as the studios existed, there's about been about they put about ten good movies a year, all the studios combined. It's been the same almost every year since the studios have existed. And this year obviously broke that. I know a film like uh, that I went into and I loved it. And I did. I, I don't think I read any reviews. It was the, the Sopranos guy film. Because uh, you wanted to maybe even do a podcast on the film. With Julia Louise Dreyfus? No. Uh, you loved that too. With Gandolfini and... Gandalf- uh, yeah, that was... That you was sang a-, a song about that. You loved that movie. But the one with the, the, the oh, Rock and Roll Band. Never Fade Away. Never Fade Away. Uh, Why are we talking away. about this 20... What is, what is that, a 2013 movie? I'm saying... No, you were asking about going into films and, and seeing something uh, without any knowing, any knowledge ahead of time. You went in and saw a movie written and directed by the guy who had directed... Uh, uh, wrote and directed many of the episodes... And created the episodes of what many people consider the greatest television show Which of I've only time. seen one... I don't, and at that time, I might not have even seen the first season yet. Okay. So, uh, I didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't mean to shit on your... your no, uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to think of, of a film that really... That nobody got... And there was no buzz about it. Nobody talked about it. The critics didn't seem to be whole hum about it. Or I don't even know what the critical response to it was. And I love the film. I love the film. Rhett, before we get to your other nebulous four or five <laughs> oh, I, maybe likes, um, Smith, uh, real briefly, you before we were talking in the episode, you said that you probably watch more comedy specials this year than you saw movies. Can you... I, I put you on the spot. You don't have a list, but do you have some comedy specials that you thought were great this year? Well, honestly, I watched um, all. I think Chappelle has seven um, specials he's done with Netflix in the last three years. I watched all those again, including the newest one was only twenty minutes, but it was after the George Floyd incident. It was actually that was a I don't great. Know if, I, I watched that one too. That was a very have you have you seen all the others? No, they're all uh, brilliant in their own way. I, I've seen I've probably seen half of them, but this one is year. What I found so fascinating was how. It was, it was almost. I don't want to compare it to Nanette, but like it had that vibe of like, look, I'm not telling you traditional jokes, or like, look, this whole me talking for I don't a while know if there set was up, a joke in the whole yeah, set, the, the whole, whole thing special. was just like, and, and the thing is like your experience of like listening to someone set up. If, if like you listen to a comedian's comedian like that tell a joke over a long period of time, you're like, oh my god, they're going 20 minutes for a setup because it's going to be an amazing punchline, and you get to the end of this, and Chappelle's point is like. There's no fucking punchline to this. This is, yeah, it was, it was still captivating. It was very raw, which is what I enjoyed about it. I I, honestly, I don't know if you could even compare it to the others simply because it's not of that same length and it's just, you know, basically just one short monologue. But I I like that. And I think that he's literally at the top of his game. If you have to list standups, he's, he's got to be number one. And I think probably Bill Burr, and I watched every one of his as well. And I watched him in sequence. I think I watched every one that because Netflix has a good portion of his specials right now. I, I didn't see, yeah. I haven't seen Bill Burr, but I did see him on SNL. He, well, I, I, he is also one of the, unlike Chappelle, I don't know, he's always been this good. He's really come into his prime <laughs> recently. I think that, you know, the last four or five years, he's got to be another one of those guys that's at the top of that. He's list. also, um, he was great. Uh, he had this guest role on Mandalorian, but he was in yeah. King, King of Staten Island. He's pretty solid. It, absolutely. Well, he was Apparently terrific he in The Mandalorian. I didn't know he could act, but I thought he was great in The Mandalorian. Yeah. And I was telling my kids, I was like, that's Bill Burr. He's great. They don't give a shit. <laughs> uh, so was it mainly Chappelle and Bill Burr? Were the? No, I, I, uh, I, I watched the other Hannah Gatsby special, which was... I, it could only have been because I thought Nanette really, you know, it touched me. I thought it was terrific, and I mean, this was more of a. I mean, it's it's got comedy elements in it, but she's really, I think, more of a 
a one person show. It and and she says that actually. I saw she was on um, Pete Holmes podcast and she said, you know, she's she makes her set list like she was doing uh, a comedy festival. You know how in Europe they have week long festivals and you do the same show every night. She said that's how she sets hers up. And so I don't know. And I, and not that I didn't like it, but I I feel like you know when you can't. I wouldn't put that in my in one of my favorites that I'd seen this year. Okay. I watched. Um, you see, I, I obviously don't have a list. I just remember those specifically because I watched all the Chappelle's and all the. I watched Chris Rock special. I don't know if that came out this year. That was pretty disappointing, but you could tell. I watched the. I think it wasn't that last year. It might have been. That's what's you know honestly because because it's twenty twenty because twenty twenty has been twenty years as we. I tell you, it has been twenty years. I've I've talked to a couple people. What were your favorite movies this year? I really love Marriage Story. Oh yeah, really? Because that came out last year. You know, I really loved Godfather and Godfather Two. <laughs> well, I mean, at least Marriage Story could be reasonably assumed. Like that seems like it came out this year, even though. It well, doesn't. I tell, I tell you what. I mean, I I, I I've heard. I finally have started to hear other people say it, but the pandemic. For someone like me, it's kind of been a blessing in disguise. It, I mean, I, I, that sounds terrible, but I just I've been able to hunker down and watch a lot of things because I, typically I'm, you know, Aaron, as you know, I'm running back and forth to show place three or four times a week, keep, keeping up with the new movies, and I've had a break from that. And it's been it's kind of nice. I just and, and I'm pulling stuff off my shelf and and so and, and then that Bruce Lee box set came out. The and criterion, I went, the criterion, and I went through uh, right near the start of the pandemic or in July, I guess. And I just watched every film. I went through the entire uh, uh, box set. It was wonderful. It was just a, it went the, the revisit all those Bruce Lee films. And so I've been, you know, catching up on stuff like that. It's been that's um, now at the beginning of this, you and I both were in agreement on that. And the weird thing was, I was going through my list through the year, and like first half of the year my movie going watching was pretty solid and it's really unfortunate for someone that i don't know runs a film podcast <laughs> to uh, the second half of the year it's been more like i'm gonna read more books and comics and my movie going's been going down significantly there and can be books and comics about film <laughs> there has been that a lot there there definitely has been that a lot so but ted do you want to f- your last favorites of the year. That's, I mean, that's I pretty much am. You just like that one movie. I've exhausted uh, the, the Charlie Kaufman film, uh, The Possessor, uh, The uh, Let Him Go. Uh, I saw I can set a portrait of a lady if you want to count that for this year. All right, uh, a, a fire. But uh, all right, then I'm going to finish. Yeah, up you my finish off. Yeah, I'm, uh, all right, this help. I'm going to. If you guys want to chime in, ask me questions. I'm just going to rail through this. Go um, number ten, Tenet. Uh, number nine, Borat, subsequent movie film. Number eight, The Invisible Man. Number seven. Number eight? Wow. It was really strong. And I know you don't like horror films, but uh, it's technically not. It's, yeah. I mean, it's technically not. There you go, Giz. I know. I was, I was, it was baiting you. Uh, my, uh, for you out there in the audience, ignore anything Aaron says about what my tastes are. It was, it was, it was funny. There was a notable difference. That's why I was... <laughs> When I saw it in IMAX versus when I saw it uh, at the drive-in, and the movie's a very dark movie, and I don't mean that content-wise, I just mean that in lighting-wise. So seeing it at a drive-in was not the best way, and there was there was differences there. Um, number seven, Paul Springs. Number six, let the wait, 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 what's Paul Springs? It's the movie with Andy Samberg and. Uh, oh yeah, okay, which I don't know much about. But. Yeah. Um, number six, let them all talk. Number five. Bill and Ted face the music. Wow. Okay, then. I've mentioned this before. I think I just needed a movie that was like a movie that I knew. You know, I go outside, look up at the stars, and someone else somewhere is looking at the same star. Having just where did you walked. have? Uh, I think of ending things. You get that? Oh my gosh! <laughs> if it was effective for him, you know, wow. it, it just. Touched him at the right. I know, moment. I know. Gotta, sometimes with that, there was that movie, there yes. was that vibe to the movie of just like um, humanity. Humanity snatches uh, um, meaning from the jaws of defeat. That just felt right. Well, the thing is, I have heard a few people say, "Yeah, I didn't like that Charlie Kaufman film." I don't think I've heard anyone say they didn't like Bill and Ted. Yeah, and the thing is, everyone like, saw liked it. What, what do you guys? You uh, have you have heard the argument that it's not a well made movie. Though. Can I interject? <laughs> have you guys? Uh, what's your take on the first two, both of you? I'm a, I'm a fanatic for the second one. I I, I don't really care for either of them. 
Really? No, okay. I was at the... I think I retroactively liked them, liked them more, but Bogus Journey is such... Like, the the Bergman parody alone is just like... Well, I'm tempted to buy... Uh, the blue, There's a Blu-ray with all three uh, on it. You should it. get and it. I'm, I'm, Bogus I'm, Journey is... Like, Death is just so amazing. It's so cool. I don't, I don't think it's a generational thing, too. It might be. I it mean, might obviously, be. I don't think it is. Well, I can't. I think I kind of. I think I. I don't know. If, I don't think I've seen either one. I don't. Uh, I don't crucify me, but I, it's. I almost kind of like lumped them over with the Adam early Adam Sandler films. I just never. There was a generational thing. I just. Well, those are wow, awesome. There are some good early Adam Sandler. Well, films I know. Too. I know. I, I mean, you know that I, I get chastised all the yeah. time for that. Well, you know, my, you know, my first Adam Sandler film in the theater. My first one was Punch Drunk Love. Well, that's a good place to start. It was opening night. There were two other couples in it. Yeah, it was no. an AMC, and they walked out. And, and they walked out. I was and I was I was working at Showplace North when that came, or we got. I saw it in Louisville, and then the next week we got it, and so I saw the walkouts. Yeah, I remember. Was it? I was the 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 thing about uh, Bill and Ted is the ethos over the years have really grown for people. The whole like be excellent to each other line has become more sincere to people as opposed to like I was listening to. Um, I was listening to, oh, what's the writer's name? Um, he wrote X-Men and Ed Solomon. He was talking about when that movie came out because the two lead characters were stupid. It became synonymous with a stupid movie for the for early reviews. Yeah. Mm. They got thrown in with like Beavis and Butthead. Well, that's what I think. And, and Adam Sandler usually plays kind of dummy yeah. character. You know, that's why. Um, um, you guys are like blending five to ten years <laughs> together right now. I know. Well, generally. Hey, but, <laughs> Could that five to ten years get off my porch? Generationally, that's uh, you know like a security blanket for your generation. Those movies. That is not a security blanket movie. <laughs> well, I mean the fact that you see them differently than we do. A lot of it has to do with you saw those at the right time. We were probably too old for those movies. Yeah, I'm not saying that yeah. I hate those movies. Well, I think I think there's a point there just because I feel much more strongly about Bogus Journey than I do Excellent Adventure. And, and I do like uh, the fact that uh, Evan Dorkin, one of my favorite comic book creators, he, he's done a da- comic book adaptations of uh, Bill and Ted. So it, I get it gets props for that. I mean, so you, by that logic, you're also a big fan of the what's it the 1941 adaptation or any movie that has a good adaptation comic adaptation. That, well, 1941 is a bizarre adaptation. That's that's off the rails. That's I don't know if, if you can call it an adaptation. It's more like a LSD trip of I'm, a movie or something. I'm glad I brought it up on the 2020 <laughs> recap movie uh, episode. Uh, number four, going to, we've already talked about this on another episode. I think you and I specifically talked about this. Some of my favorite movies this year were um, filmed, uh, film adaptations of stage, uh, stage shows where they just filmed the same show. So number four is what the Constitution means to me. Number three, which I just saw last night and was very touching, was the documentary Time. Uh, number two, Sound of Metal. And number one, back to the stage uh, thing. I it's And bad for a 2020 episode just because if maybe this episode came out four years ago, this would have been much more notable or relevant. But number one, Hamilton. Is it a 2020 film? Yep. Came out in July. Oh, well, that's up there. I, I guess I would put that in my... That's something I really desperately would have liked to have seen at the movie theater. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd really... I, 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 I was listening to somebody ranting about uh, it never hit the sweet spot between a movie adaptation versus a stage show. Like, they were, like, wanting more wide shots. And I don't... I didn't agree with that assessment. I thought they did as best a job of, like, trying to straddle the line. Well, I, I might have been... Maybe you misinterpreting. I, I kind of brought that up a little... I, 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 I thought... No, this was, is someone else oh, different said it, but what we, was Well, I just thought it was... It was a fascinating hybrid of a... Because, uh, you know, I guess they shot two or three nights. Yeah. Just, and they... So... You're not. I thought it was a fascinating hybrid. Yeah. Or at least, like, I thought they did a good job. I know, I know. I, 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 but it was interesting, too, because I, I found myself uh, really uh, fascinated by the, the director had these choices to make. And and, and some, every once in a while, I would go, oh, I wish he had stayed back. I wanted to, you know, or, you know I wish he'd got, you know, get a. It was really, it was kind of interesting. I was like, I was almost like backseat directing a little bit every once in a while in that film. Sure. Because I knew I could see that happening, you know. I, I didn't remember that so much as, like, I was just happy with certain, like, the, um, 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 the, oh, I, f- I forget what the opening cue is, or song is, but the, um, um, just when he says his name for the first time and just the close-up that they go with. And see, I think, I think I really would have done, I would have had another, I would have had a different experience if I saw it on a big screen. I think I would have even thought about it maybe. Yeah. I, it would have been, I would have been more engulfed. Well, honestly, yeah. though, then we, wouldn't we all rather see that 
show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are we True. losing something there? Well, no, 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 but see the show first and then see the film. That's is the point of saying. the show is it's a, it's a hybrid or, or it's the hybrid for uh, no, not everyone lived in New York or LA right, for it, the first run. If you've so seen see the show when, when you see the film and you recognize what choices, directorial choices he made, as Ted said, that you you already recognize why that happens or also gives you a little bit of shorthand you know you also know what may be going around in the big picture because are, 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 are you eventually going to see the adaptation where it opens up and, we, and they're actually on you know the, the i mean i think i think the whole vibe that i got was for this uh precluded the uh, movie adaptation i mean in the heights got pushed back this year i wouldn't count anything out of course you know because like we've seen things like the producer and uh the producers and like, no i would count it out just because this is gonna yeah, be because I, I mean his buddy other, talks his, his other show in the heights was supposed to come out this summer and it got pushed back to next year but i would i yeah, would be surprised when we see you know a film go from us you know there's a music as a stage play and then it goes to a movie and then it becomes a musical, and then it goes another movie adaptation. I mean, so you're saying that this cultural phenomenon from four years ago, people are going to suddenly realize there's money in it and convince the uh, yeah. creator to adapt yeah. it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, Book of Mormon obviously uh, is coming soon, I and mean, that's going to happen, right? And I think that those two are kind of linked, you know. But Book of Mormon hasn't. They they keep pushing it back, and they keep saying they're not going to make a movie out of it. And I'm more on your side on Book of Mormon. They'll but, but all right. Um, Movies I still need to watch. Um, this list is always terrible for me every year. And this year, even with all this free time, I was reading books and reading comics. So I guess I didn't get around to it. But, um, I think I, Ted is also overstating how much he got done during the pandemic. No. He, watched, he watched Bruce Lee movies and <laughs> ate oh, Cheetos. Well, you and, want, me, want me to read off my list to you? I can't, I can't what list else to did you do during the pandemic <laughs> other than the Bruce Lee Sleep. films? Yeah, Sleep. let's see, honestly. I, we, Shane and I discussed this. I saw Shane and you weren't there. I think it was when you saw... I don't even Mank. remember. It was it Mank? And then I, I was kind of... You know, I didn't take advantage of the time the way that I should have. I didn't get a chance to whittle down my to-do list of movies and books. And I thought, well, I would just wonder if anyone else did. I mean, I wound up doing a lot of things or staying productive. But, I, you know, a lot of the things that I thought I would do if I ever had, you know, that Twilight Zone moment, you know, time enough at last, that I would do these things. I, that lit, And really, the, I think my stack of DVD, and in fact, I'm certain my stack of Blu-rays and DVDs got larger. I, I like the idea that the pandemic is your broken glasses. You're like, <laughs> you looked out, no! It's my, not fair. <laughs> my list uh, to see. Well, uh, you have kids too, you know. And you, you have, have kids. I do indeed. Yeah. You have kids in a family. So. Yeah. I did watch all the Harry Potter films. So there you go. There you go. There we go. Uh, so I have a Luna Lovegood uh, imitation. Harry Potter, you listen to me right now. <laughs> I'm glad you interrupted me for that. And I mean that sincerely. <laughs> Movies but like... You haven't seen a great... Oh my God, for Christ's sake. <laughs> the best imitation you're ever going to see is Aaron uh, running like Wolverine. <laughs> Hugh Jackman. Uh, in what, what, which one was that? Bare-ass Hugh Jackman yeah. running into the woods. He won't do it now. He, he, he won't no, ever do it again. But it was the greatest well, thing no in the world. Longer, you know, I'm older. I can't physically do it. You guys are both doing visual cues on an audio uh, podcast. Uh, why not? So this is this is <laughs> and now Smith's doing magic tricks with his finger. Um, this is all staying in. Um, movies I wanted to watch this year. One, two, three. Um, Swallow. Ba- um, Baccarat. I think that's how it's pronounced. Obviously, No Man Lad. We haven't gotten to. Ammonite, uh, Minari, I don't know if that's out yet, Another Round, The Nest. My next one's probably going to be uh, Ma Rainey's uh, Black Bottom, Kajillionaire, which you mentioned earlier, I'm Your Woman, Uncle Frank, which was uh, Alan Ball, even though that got bad reviews. It's the creator of Six Feet Under and True Blood. Um, Save Yourself, Irresistible, The Glorias, News of the World still coming out. Are you guys going to get News of the World? Universal, I'm selling right? tickets, so hopefully. It's a Universal movie. Um that uh christmas day antebellum um then the big ones that are already out on the services uh oh i didn't see relic uh capone i never got around to capone and that sounded like a batshit movie to watch uh the platform i never got around to the and i still got to finish up the steve mcqueen small axe movies the uh los angeles film critic circle award-winning Small ass. But if that's you think about it, the twenty nine that you put together of films that you mostly which is liked, a really wonky or at least respected, list. 
And then you <laughs> they're have always wonky lists. Thirteen you know or that. fourteen more. That that's still a relatively small number. I don't. I just think that you know, not to write off this year, but it's a write off. It's a write off. This is a write off year. This is this year is deductible completely. I then want to lastly go over the uh, the one distributor that was able to put out its main content this year. This is going to be a re- either recurring theme or a recurring conversation on here or its own episode. But Netflix putting out major movies by major filmmakers that are either he- neither here nor there, fat, or just not the best movies of that filmmaker. Like... And whether or not you want to talk about it, like their executives are letting these filmmakers do whatever they want. They have no development story people who are pushing them to do anything, which in most film fans would have thought would have been a panacea, the thing we'd always wanted. Um, you think it's like some weird subconsciousness going on in their, in their head? Like going, oh, is this for Netflix? Oh, uh, no, I think it's even worse. Where or like, well, the studios wouldn't let me put They my, come my, to my... Netflix with an idea. And it's not fully fleshed out, or, or Netflix is just greenlighting yeah. everything instead yeah. of saying, well, yeah. you know, maybe you need to refine this idea, or maybe we need to come at it from a different angle, or maybe we need to do, pick a different project. All right. Did you have the Woody Allen? is just giving money away. Did you have the Woody Allen film on your list? No, I didn't have the Woody Allen. It's out now. No, on, on no. Blu-ray. I don't know if we should no, crack that, into this. Did you, guys, did, did you guys read the book? I was tempted to read his book. I, uh, I, 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 I pot shot it. Downloaded on Audible, but I did. It's, I know. I, Does he read it on Audible? I don't think so. No, okay. I haven't listened to it yet. When How about the cow? He is that on their list? First cow. I have not First seen cow. First cow. And here's Kelly Riker is um, someone a filmmaker. It's it's routinely getting on everyone's top list, and I I haven't. I mean, you, none of us have seen it. So. No, no, it's on my to see list along with Ammonite. I really wanted to see that as well. Where is that playing at though? I don't think it is. And I actually think that got released. So unfortunately, I don't know. I have no idea. So I guess, do we need to wind down? Ted, do you have more stuff on you wanted to? Not really. I, I, like I said, I didn't see uh, much of the new stuff. other than. Well, did you have any closing thoughts on the um, glorious wasteland that was the year where theatrical got taken away from us and we we had what forty percent capacity of film potential this year. I don't think it was even that. Yeah, I, I was making a joke about. Oh, the, as far as forty percent. Yeah, but even then, like I think you're right. I think it's more like ten percent of like it. Well, so Smith uh, winding down. I know they haven't finalized the stimulus yet, but there's um there's live venue and movie theaters uh, uh, relief in there. Yeah, and, mix. Uh, Facebook post. <laughs> I, I didn't see the he, post. I, I, I think Mick, uh, Mick Steeler, who uh, the, man, the, the owner, he's been on the podcast. Yeah, the uh, he he says like thank God for the you know he he, he really did this huge praise uh, post on his uh well, sure team. and obviously you know we needed it it yeah. was essential and you know when AMC came out last week and said they were going to go bankrupt in January if you know something didn't get passed I mean if the the biggest ex- exhibition chain in the world is going to go bankrupt in January. You can only imagine what, you know, how the, like you said, mom and pop groups are. But Smith, I wanted, what, what do you, I always love on the episodes you're on. I love asking you your uh, epidemiology expertise, but what are you feeling about uh, vibes about the next year of movie going? Like, I mean, is the vaccine hits? The, the vaccine obviously is important for everyone. And I mean, it just not necessarily just being at, the theater recently i mean it's the holiday season so you have to do some shopping and i see a lot of people honestly taking it more seriously there was a time in maybe october november people weren't taking things seriously and i didn't feel comfortable taking my kids to target i didn't feel comfortable going out and obviously i still haven't eaten at a restaurant but you know we went to uh, a candy store today getting some candy from my mom and everybody in there and it was it was busier than i wanted it to be there were more people in there than i felt comfortable having my kids in there but everybody in there had a mask on everybody in there was giving me space so i you know that's obviously important a vaccine is essential people can taking it it seriously is essential and i mean we could uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel if that happens what are you expecting for wonder woman are you guys first off you guys are getting it right yeah well honestly I, I mean, it's just like I've said to you a couple different times. I don't know how busy I really want it to be or how busy 
people coming to see a movie want it to be. So we have a lot of these private screenings where people can bring their immediate family. That's been extraordinarily popular. And, and similar to the year that I think most of us have had, people are choosing to see comfort films, Elf, Christmas Vacation, Polar Express, things like that, which, you know, obvi- It's a Wonderful Life, which I watched again on the big screen just recently. Oh, that sounds cool. It was, you know what? And our friend Steven, who we, we spoke about earlier, he came to see it and he also said, you know, it's a little long. Uh, you don't forget, like you forget it's 210. Oh, no, it's, it's 210, but it feels every minute of it. I listened to a uh, a Lux radio radio play of it, and it had all the same actors, but it was only an hour long, and it was tight, and it was it was concise. It was brilliant. And then I watched the movie, and it does seem a little long, honestly. Well, Capra understands the everyman, and the everyman wants to sit in their seat a little longer. Well, I don't know. I love Capra, but it, it, it didn't... I, I mean, I, I've, I've watched it every year for 100 years, and I'll watch it again next year. I just had forgotten how long it was. Miracle on 34th Street uh, just moves along at a, at a perfect clip. It's at, at like an hour 29. It's, it's a perfect holiday film. It doesn't have any fat. And, you know, just got great performances, great tie up at the end. It's just, it's a, the perfect. And then a lot of people say that It's a Wonderful Life is the perfect holiday film. And I don't know. I mean, I, I think that it has a lot more like melancholia to it than Miracle does. But yeah, I mean, like it's, it's, it just feels like this is the holiday episode but... of your podcast, isn't it? No, this is the follow up. This is the this is the year end. The follow up. The, uh, no, follow-up. You, forget those films. You should all be watching 1951 Scrooge with Alistair Sim as Ebenezer Scrooge. That's the one to watch. That's also great. Yeah, yeah it's great. Okay. And it gets dark. It gets because uh, I, again, I, I was on Cinema Chat and she's like, I, I go, I was looking at some of that. And it looks really dark. I go, well, and Scrooge, the Christmas Girl gets pretty dark, and, but it makes the ending so much better. The, guys, you know this is airing after Christmas, right? So right. right. Why well, oh, does that matter? No, it doesn't. You're right. Um, when Smith, you say airing, I mean, I don't know. Is that applicable right. to a podcast? It's premiering. You could just put it out tonight All right, if you fine. had the time. This is going to be up before Christmas next year. Um, right. Smith, uh, is there Christmas anything? Christmas isn't in on 25th Christmas of December. Christmas is in your heart. It, 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 to me, it's that whole week to, to up the New Year's. I, I, Christmas is the American fourth I, quarter. I, I had an a, a, a ex-wife of a, <laughs> totally a, a, of a friend that took the tree down like the next day uh, for Christmas. Like, no! You leave the tree up through New Year's Day, you know? So, Or, or until you can take it down after New Year's Day. <laughs> when do you put up the tree, though? I don't, well, I don't even put a tree up. Everybody's now. putting it up the week up, before yeah. Thanksgiving now. And yeah. I'm, no, I no, can't no, that's way too early. No, no, but, but, you know, this year I did but, because I was home. But to me, you know, as a, I go back to the holiday of school when, you know, it, it seemed like that was just the eternity between Christmas and New Year's Day, that whole week between it. And just, it was glorious and it was all holiday and it's still. And it the, snowed. And it snowed and, there, and, and the, the holiday it lingered. Well, that's that's a dated thing there. Snow. It doesn't bit, snow here it, any longer. It's not. And yeah. So um, by the way, I think I'm changing the name of the podcast to uh, Three Men Tell People When to Put Up Their Holiday <laughs> Festivities. Uh, Shane, I noticed that you are not in the holiday spirit here. Yeah. Um, there's nothing. I don't see anything Christmassy yet. I, I did a Zoom the other day where I put on a red sock hat. And, or like sock hat, I mean like that was. The, I think Shane would benefit from seeing 1951 Scrooge. Yes. Do you think I need to see Ghost of Christmas Past, Present, and Future? Because I see them all the time. Uh, Smith, what else is on uh, the library of movies that people could privately rent? Oh, I'm, honestly, it's what we're showing. If they want to see something else, it's a pain in the ass, so they should just pick something that we're playing. No, because obviously you have I to I was make... hoping that the, like you could open a wide variety. Honestly, you could pick... If you want to see Solo on the big screen, <laughs> call the office and say you want to see it. And if you want to spend that kind of money, they could get Can it. Can I show Caligula? <laughs> Uh, if if you if that's important to you and you've got that kind of cash, I'm no sure brass. that they can make an arrangement for you to show that. So movie. I'm kidding, but so I don't think you want to do that. We are going to be showing the uh, New Year's Day uh, uh, charity showing of Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> so Smith, did you have any more thoughts? No. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, stay safe for the last episode of this. God forsaken year 2020. Bah humbug. Yeah. Uh, Ted, Aaron Smith, thank you guys for being back on the podcast. Anytime. Anytime.